When we get up in the morning Along with coffee, toast and cake If you like the old stone eroding You like to break and beg Now let's join Greg Reed and Griff Martin As we head out on the road So sit right back Buckle right in It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show Good morning Time to rise and shine. I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stonette for the Stoned Roadie Show, and it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin. The Stoned Roadie Show, podcast number 170, Wake and Bake, the Morning Buzz, episode number 51, Action. Well, good morning, fellow earthlings. Looky here, looky here. My name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. the Stoned Roadie, also known as the most famous roadie ever since (laughs) the dinosaurs roamed the face of the earth. And with me tonight, as usual, this morning, (laughs) this morning, yeah, at 6 a.m. this morning, my co-host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. So what the heck are we going to talk about this lovely morning there, Griff? Oh, we got all kinds of good stuff. You know, we can talk about a lot of great comments, people. A uh, lot of great comments. Uh, all of the uh, speaking of, and, and I want to take a little time to to uh, thank all of the uh, Stone Roadie podcast listeners because um I tell you what, there's some great people, man, and people that donate stuff. And, you know, there's nothing worse than somebody that doesn't appreciate shit. And um, I just want to make sure that you guys know that we appreciate you guys and that the um, survivors, uh, they appreciate you too. And um, everything you guys donate, the time you take, uh, the right comments and things it's it's really awesome because there's some really great people there's some assholes not not really podcast people but assholes out there in the world but you know there's some really great people that, that donate money and time and things like that and um and we just want to recognize all you guys and that you uh you're a step above and the Skinner fans are the greatest fans on earth and um yeah we want to thank you guys for uh all the comments and we got a bunch of comments on here today and um got some cool stuff coming up um uh let me see we got a i got a fishing trip playing with gene odom on monday and uh hopefully the weather's gonna be good um <coughs> painted a painting and uh gene's gonna come over and sign it and then uh he's bringing me a big hunk of hell house uh dock wood um i bought it from him uh, to help him out um and then monday uh, when he gets here monday we're gonna go out and we're gonna throw some shiners in the lake across the street from me here out in uh bad company too and i'm gonna have my uh stickers on the boat that dave the disciple made for me and we're going to videotape that if if all goes well and i don't i hate to get back on here and go well it didn't happen you know but it's possible but we're going to eventually before it's all over with we are going to um do it so monday it's planned and gene's got some really good stories that he wants to talk about while we're fishing he already told me uh one of them about how he whipped the gun out on some guy that was water skiing. Um, Ronnie wasn't with him. He was with another guy and, uh, they, they hauled Gene to jail and I hadn't heard that story yet. So (laughs) it's going to be a good one. Um, and then he's got another story about how he went out sturgeon fishing with Gary Rossington and some other guy, uh, during the, Rossington Collin days. Um, what do you got there, Craig? 
Well, Dave, the disciple sent me these. <clears throat> <coughs> That's my, uh, he wanted to know who took that picture. <coughs> oh, you <he> got me. <coughs> and um, <laughs> that was taken out at uh, Barry Face uh, house in Colorado when we were out there doing that, playing football when the, everybody was looked like they was playing football at Barry's and, uh, we got our pitch, our uh, passport picture taken, and that's my passport picture. Dean, my, Dean got me to try some heroin, so yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing heroin during. Oh, that. it was Dean's fault, huh? Yeah, it was Dean's fault. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, is him, that him and me that... and some colored girl was doing the heroin at at Mary Faye's. <laughs> Well, you could have called them colored back then, but they're not colored now, Gene. I mean, Gene, Craig. Well, that's how we call them. We, I was 74, so we call them colored. Like we call them. Colored. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was okay back then. Yeah, that's what you called them back then. They've changed yeah. a few times since that, you know, but I don't know. Now, if you call them colored, they don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the signs used to say for these, these restrooms are for colored folk, you know. I remember when I was a kid and I grew up in Miami up until I was, uh, I was born in Miami and, and then we moved when I was seven, but I remember going to the courthouse for something. Uh, my father was in trouble for something. And, uh, there was a water fountain in there and it said colored and then white. And I, you know, I, that was even around even back then. Well, that was in the sixties, but, uh, yeah. So you, that's your heroin look. Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh God. Well, yeah, you live to tell about it, Craig. You live to tell yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, we, uh, yeah, Gene and I got that fishing trip planned and then, um, uh, got a little bit of bad news for you. I gave Craig an assignment. He went down in the basement to look for that tackle box. And <laughs> I didn't expect he would find it because, you know, he, and, and, you know, in his defense, I can, I have trouble finding stuff in my house too, but you know, you think, you know, where something is, but you're not going to give up. Are you Craig? No, man. You know, I've looked, I looked, not only looked where I thought it was, I looked a couple of places where I thought it might be, you know, I hit, I think I hid it from myself, so I wouldn't sell it. I don't know. I don't know. I hide things, you know, where I know I'll find them, but then I don't know where I hid them. And I'll find it. It's around here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and but then I'm, you I'm, had, then you I'm had remembering, a... I'm remembering more about the whole situation, you know? Yeah. I, I, I remembered Bronny standing there on the bank with one of them damn, um, Pope Peel pocket fisherman. And the more that I thought about it, I must have said, you know, I think one of those is in there. That one, one of them. Pope pocket. And then I remember a knife, a yellow knife. I'm sure it was in that box and some things that look like jitterbugs. And then some of them weights you clamp on. Yeah. I remember more about it, but yeah, it seemed, it seems like, you know, that, you know, Ronnie, when he grew up, he was, all he fished one was with was a purple worm because all he fished for was the, the big trophy bass. And when we got, he got to places where up north, he, you know, wasn't used to different types of what people used for fishing. So seems like I remember you, Ronnie, using that pocket, Pope Peel pocket with a, with a bobber and a worm. And I, remember, I just laughed. I said, yeah. Can you imagine Ronnie using a pocket fisherman with a bobber and a worm, you know, cause that, you know, he, I know he only used a, 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 a purple worm and a, you know, a casting rod, you know? So, um, and then, and then I called, uh, Gene up. I'm hearing an echo, Craig. What's that echo? And I called Gene up and he, uh, I said, Gene, I said, is it possible Ronnie would have bought a Pope Hill pocket? Because you told me to ask him <laughs> and he goes, certainly, man, certainly. Yeah. Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie would do that to save room. 
he would he would get a popeel pocket fisherman he goes but <laughs> but i didn't go fishing with him that much craig probably went fishing with him more than i did well when he gary was yeah that's what i was thinking i was going mm -hmm. with gary you know gary's gone and you know i only fished with ronnie a few times in the boat but you know like i said we went to places like dairy and lake and they had you know where we played with skinner and there there were places where you could fish and i, I remember one time i went out there and he at a place a venue where we were we were playing and he was down there out there fishing in the lake i remember that just the one or two times he did that but um I don't know. It seemed well, like that vision came up where he was using them. Yeah. Some you, pocket fishermen. You had total recall. <laughs> but but my buddy Sammy, my buddy Sammy come over. He goes, man, I heard Griff messing with you about trying to find that tackle box. So and, and tell you, find it. Maybe these will appease him, you know, so they they made four leonard skinner lures back about i don't know 20 he said he's had them 25 years and there are these lures here leonard skinner fishing lures oh yeah and they're they got different names on them this is the leonard skinner baby bass uh, uh skinner spitter it says to throw it and then when it hits the hits the water it, let it sit there until it makes a like a three foot diameter you know ripple in the water like this and then and then kind of wiggle it and it said to it's all described here it's hard for me to see it says to wiggle it and let the fish look at it for a little bit like you're sitting in a restaurant looking at the looking at the menu and yeah it's all it's all in there yeah yeah, it's kind of small letter, yeah. but and uh yeah and it said let him look at it like you're looking at the menu and then wiggle it around and some it's a, well who all it's signed the back of you i mean it's not real well signature. yeah it's there's all the signatures it's uh billy gary billy huey johnny ricky and uh leon yeah that's a great I'm lineup of guys right there yeah but I don't want to take my box, but they're they're both they're probably they're a lot alike. You know, they're a lot alike. Here's one, and then this is the only one that's really different. It's a blue one, and it's called a, uh, a natural shad, Skinnered Spitter, a natural shad. But I don't know what we're gonna do with these yet. I, uh, should we we got four more weeks of uh giveaways to go here should we make these one of our giveaways heck yeah man i think people would love that especially i mean you could probably still get them off the internet but not with a craig reed signature on them <laughs> i don't know yeah i don't know the whole history about them i know they're about 25 years old and I, there, there's a number on them. It's a Jacksonville number. They made in Palatka. And there's a 904 number where I called it, but it's disconnected. But, yeah, they're pretty cool. I don't want to take them out of the packaging. No. No, that would that would ruin the collectability of it. Yeah, so I don't want to do that. But Well, isn't that, like, cool, Sammy, you know, doing that? I mean, that's another divine intervention, you know, when, <laughs> when you yeah. start – jogging your memory and then next thing you know sammy's like hey wait a minute i got something over here yeah and then here cool. you got four leonard skinner fishing lures yeah yeah ain't that I think cool we got four or five weeks i think well this week this what well, today's the drawing isn't it? i forgot about that yeah we just are you prepared that. yeah kind of i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah i kind of got it figured out yeah, uh, I think we're up to 150, 59 now. I just handed out a couple of numbers yesterday, uh, and I looked, uh, looked, and I didn't have any more emails. So, uh, you know, I think we're at 159, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I got it figured out. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll on our first, our first, our, our first giveaway. 
um, you know, we got had a confusion, and we we gave it we gave it one by mistake. We gave wheelchair Chuck a, a, a grand prize, you know, and then we realized what we did. So, so then um, Mike Mike Stolings, he was seventy nine. So we then we gave him a grand prize, and then uh, and then uh, the week after that, George's lawn service. He uh, he won the next drawing, and he was uh, he got the fox, the fox uh, picture, and then uh, uh, Lorette, uh, Latonya Burton. No, is that right? Yeah, then Latonya Burton. She got the next one. She was number ninety-eight. She got the the, the uh, Leonard Skinner sticker. And then this week, uh, this last week, uh, Donald Johnson, number 76, won with the million-dollar bills. And then this week, this drawing, you'll win the uh, Rossin and Collins band sticker. But then you also get, you know, everybody's still going to get the uh, the half dollar too. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, getting finalizing my. Uh, document to where i'm satisfied you know with it to hang on somebody's wall for a hundred years so <laughs> so we'll get them out here yeah this week i know i said last week but i improved it again sometime <laughs> you know so this week but i think we got after this right we got four more weeks left so uh you yeah, know this week we're giving away the the uh uh the rcb thing and then uh, i think i gotta figure this out then uh, the, the last thing would be what to give away a kazoo you know and uh i'm come i'm i, I came up with a, a t-shirt I'm, I'm gonna see if i can't get one get a, a kazoo a kazoo put on the front of the t-shirt and have the captain say can you kazoo <laughs> or do, oh. do do you do you kazoo? That'll be it. Do you kazoo? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny. <laughs> so, but you know that's how it goes when you eat these indica. Oh, di oh, is that what you're into now? Indica, yeah, the boysenberry, the indica, in the wild, in the couch, in the wild indica. Yeah, that's why. I'm, Having a little bit of a hard time talking. <laughs> I never remember that time you came to my house and um, and I had a, a buddy of mine give me one of those gummy ropes, and it was a high it was a high THC content rope. And Craig came over, and I said, "Craig, man, I got something back in the bedroom. I'm gonna give to you because I can't." I can't take it because, you know, I was working and, you know, they drug test me and stuff for that. I didn't do any of that crap. Um, and I go, I go, it's a rope. And I held it out like this and you grabbed it right out of my hand and went like that and put it in your mouth. <laughs> and I said, did I do that? To, yeah. I said, you're only <laughs> supposed to take a little pinch off of there and 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 then chad goes oh he don't care <laughs> <clears throat> and i was like damn i said i hope you're gonna be all right man and uh and he still had to go he had to go up on stage with joe barnes and gene odom and that was the night of the uh that was the night that we had the, the concert well, hell, I ate three of those other ones that put you out. I oh, yeah, yeah. You was that. Yeah, and then I took, and then you had those <laughs> those uh, skull and crossbone gummies. Yeah, I ate three of them that day. They, they were red, and <laughs> and I put one of those in the freezer so when I retired, I could take that. I could take a piece of that gummy, and then and Chad goes, "Do not take <laughs> but just a little." corner off of that and he said listen to me he said look in my eyes and listen to me you know he goes you do not want to do that trust me i'm telling you i know somebody that that did took too much and he goes it didn't work out good for him and so <laughs> so i so i retired and that was going to be my 
retirement celebration was to take a, a, a gummy from the stoned roadie. And so <laughs> I took a corner, just like Chad said, and I waited 30 minutes and nothing happened. And I go, this is bullshit, you know? And, um, and I remember Craig told me when Chad was saying that, oh, it won't kill you. <laughs> and so 30 minutes went by, 45 minutes went by. I didn't feel nothing. So I took another look, other piece of the corner. Another 45 minutes went by, still nothing. And so I'm going to go ahead and go up that, go up to half. And so I took that half, the whole half of that gummy. And about an hour later, I went and laid down and that's when it hit me. And I, and I was, and I was going, you know, <laughs> I think I'm going to die. I was like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even, only thing I could say was just breathe, just breathe and you'll be all right. And then I remember the next morning I was able to slither out of the bed and crawl to the bathroom and I was puking and I was like dizzy. And, and that's when I decided to move from Coco beach to uh to florida because i was afraid after that that somebody f i would be on the floor in there for a week before anybody found me dead at least over here i'll only be dead for two days before they find me but uh <clears throat> craig took three of those in one day <laughs> and so i think <clears throat> craig's got blood in his thc <laughs> That's what Gene says. Yeah, I was I was showing this. Uh, uh, our disciple Dave sent these to me yesterday. I got them in the post office, and he's got the he's got the seat number there. See? Oh yeah, okay. And then he's got the seats numbered, so then you don't have to draw your name to your seat. Whoever we get to sign these, they just sign it, and then they say what seat they're in, but they did sign. That's a good idea, Dave. That's yeah, good Dave's idea. always thinking, man. Yeah, so you don't have to write your name and then draw line to your seat. You know, your seat number's right there. Your seat's numbered. So, yeah, I was sitting in number, uh, seat number 20 I was sitting in. So, yeah. So, yeah, we got a bunch of these, and I'm going to see if I can't send them out to Clayton and maybe Kevin and yeah, and send, them, send them around to everybody, and then we can, uh, you know, maybe auction them off or something. But these would be pretty cool. It might start a new argument as to where who was sitting, though. <laughs> I think everybody. No, I was sitting in 18. No, I was sitting in 18. No, you were in 24. <laughs> <laughs> start a whole yeah. new leonard skinner argument but i wish we'd have had these for him when kenny was alive so he could you know kind of yeah. uh, show us what seat he was talking about because there was a little confusion there on that one but, yeah i know uh, yeah yeah it's too bad uh you know well at least we got kenny peden on tape telling his story yeah about the plane crash maybe, maybe we and, can uh, figure, maybe we can figure it out do some investigating and gene will probably out. know <laughs> um, yeah so yeah we got that going so uh yeah we'll have to see what we can do on that and, uh, yeah that was a good idea there dave thanks man Dave's yeah and so he's, cool. he gave me this t-shirt he made for me yeah Make that is cool. high again yeah and I got a feeling he's working on some refrigerator magnets. And <laughs> <clears throat> probably got some pretty quirky sayings on him too, I'd imagine. Uh you know, he's he he's definitely a, a disciple, man. That guy's uh pretty Oh, well then that reminds me, um Jesus for Survivors sent me a Bible. And uh Man, I really appreciate that because I could use all that, you know, the the Bible reading I can get because I've been getting hacked off lately at some people, and, uh, <laughs> and I need to learn to turn the other cheek, you know. And I've been <laughs> I've been real good, like, and I, just since I've been talking to Jesus for survivors, I've been kind of like there's some things I've been wanting to tell some people. I've been wanting to tell some people off, but I I decided not to do that, 
and uh and i can and i owe that to uh uh jesus for survivors so everything happens for a reason and thank you very much uh, there uh jc um, oh i got i got a rebuttal too i said we had a donation and i said it was from john and linda dawson actually his his name's daryl <laughs> yeah that was actually i think they said that in the comment they they said something yeah. in the comment about that so there you go yeah daryl daryl and linda dawson and then they said and we also ask for numbers for the drawing <laughs> and then i saw that so yeah they're 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 the last numbers in the drawing they're uh i i i have a number in the middle yeah, uh, uh, you know, I have a, 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 a number fifty-one. Somebody backed out of that, and I said, yeah, "I'll give you your choice. You can have a number fifty-one in the middle, or you can have fifty-eight and fifty-nine. And they felt uh, one fifty-eight and one fifty-nine, well, and they felt they felt better with one fifty-eight and one fifty-nine. I said, "I don't know. I think I'd have went toward more toward the middle myself, but." <laughs> Well, I'm kind of curious to see what happens this morning because you oh, know, yeah. we're, we're like right in the, in that groove, uh, you know, in the, in, yeah. the same, in the same arena of numbers. That's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's, uh, that's really wild. How is that even possible? But the, a lot of things are possible here on the stone roadie podcast, you know, cause this is, <laughs> this is all, uh, basically, uh, a red pill here uh this this whole yeah podcast. 70 70 76 77 79 and 80 that's that's crazy i know and if yeah if we draw if we draw that one to make them all in line which is what what number would we need to put a, a whole 78 row? 78 would put put it would be 60 76, 77, 78, 79, and 80. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, and then 98 with Latonya J. Uh, uh, Burton. Yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. So we'll have to, we'll have to, you know. Hey, you yeah. Know, and and while I'm on here too, uh, John and Teresa Hartline, I sent your posters and stickers out to you. Um, so you guys, uh, they're, they put in the mail today and, uh, be looking for Monday. So, uh, you know, I'm not like Craig. I jump right on it, man. I, as soon as I, <laughs> cause Craig, one thing about him is he remembers <laughs> what he's got to do. It just takes him a while to do it for me. If I don't do it right away, I'll forget it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to the drawing to see to see if we 78 you said 78 would put them all right in the, in yeah. the, <laughs> in the that's crazy man that's really don't crazy. get me thinking about that number or i'll say they won <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. But, uh, yeah okay well uh let me see what else i got in, written down here as far as notes um that looks like about it um you know, we can just go jump right into the comments and questions and I, and I, we need to go ahead and get started on because there's a quite a few of them and a lot of good ones. And, um, and when we finish that, we'll, uh, you guys, uh, stick around because we got the, the drawing, uh, at the end of the, the jibber jabber here. So, uh, so you ready to jump into the comments and questions, Craig? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, okay. Oh, right off the bat, right, right out of the gate, more fat jokes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said to myself, that's, that's make, gonna make Craig feel really good. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, God. Sammy was here today and I was laughing. I said, I said, here we are asking for people to subscribe and like, and subscribe and and then right and then turn around and saying uh, you know i know 80 percent of you are fat but you know go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and like us anyways <laughs> kind of yeah we're sure not kissing anybody's butt for subscribers you know? <laughs> yeah you know and, and i'm guilty too because i i there was a uh a thing on facebook and it was this big fat lady on a bicycle and she had her kid 
in a little <laughs> kitty seat behind her and the kid's face was all smushed up on her ass in the back. <laughs> and I, and I just, you know, thought it was funny and I posted and then this, this real good looking girlfriend of mine, I mean, you know, a friend, you don't really know them, you know, they're just a friend on your friend list, but you don't know them. And she's a beautiful, slender girl, you know, it looks like a model and you need to stop that, you know, and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you and your buddies laughing, she can't help it. And I said, well, I don't think they're laughing at the girl being fat. I think they're just laughing at she's so stupid. She's smothering her kid back there with her ass. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and she just kept on attacking me. And finally I said, well, you know, you got to stick up your ass anyway. And I unfriended her. <laughs> oh, so, uh, it's it's all in good fun man you guys don't take it <laughs> take it too seriously you know but uh, then it then on the other hand you know craig's trying to help so uh so i am anyway. helping I, yeah i've helped a lot of people there's a lot of people that go man you've helped me see the light i've lost a lot of weight because of you yeah, Thank it, you. that's you saved true. my and, life yeah. and i've got a comment in here and there's a fella in here and we're gonna we're going to talk about him and, um, and it's a, it's a good news story and it has to do with losing weight. So just stick around and it's, I'm going to get to it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let's go to the next one. Uh, Edward Knowlton says he would love to bid on one of those lures out of Ronnie's tackle box, but he'd really rather have one of the worms. He's already He's already done inventory on the inside the tackle box. This guy, <laughs> he thinks he knows what's in there, and we haven't even said we're going to sell anything out of there. We're just we're just trying to get Craig to find the damn thing. Well, that's what I said. I think I hid it away from myself, so I wouldn't sell it. <laughs> the, and I, and I wrote a little note to myself and I went beep, 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 back up. Hold on here. We're not, we're not, we don't even got, we don't know. Craig just now remembered there's a Pope Hill pocket fisherman in there. He thinks. Oh, I didn't rem say I remember. I said, I remember something about one. I, you know, I think, hey, I think, I, I think I, there's, I think that, there is a, that damn raspberry. Gun. I know there's a, I th I know there's a yellow, a, a knife in there with a yellow handle. I, I can remember that. Yeah, see that, that raspberry gummy is <laughs> jarring your memory. List. <laughs> it wasn't a dream. Was it? Cause of that roar Borealis? No, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then Homer Hancock, he says, you're supposed to eat to live, not live to eat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, then we got some, uh, back to the skin formation, Ken Johnson. He says, uh, Mr. Banker was written by Ronnie, Gary, and Ed, and it's one of my most favorite Skinnerd songs. Um, yeah, I think we were talking about Mr. Banker. Uh, last yeah, time. yeah. Who did the slide part? And I, I yeah. said it was. Uh, I didn't think Ed was in the band at that time, but yeah. I yeah, there's another uh, little bit of information here down in the comments that talks more about that too. Um, and then Tapey says uh, he's thinking how much he misses the Stone Roadie and Six Gun family, and everyone needs to get together for another event. Well, if they do, Griff will not be there for that. Uh, so, cause, uh, I'm about done with that, uh, with those folks right now, but, uh, I do wish them well. And, um, I, I wish all the best. And I just did get a, uh, a message from, uh, Savannah that she, uh, got her stitches out today and she's in a boot cast. And, uh, the first show that they're having is May 25th. And she'll probably be sitting down during the show. Now, those guys are very talented musicians. And if you do get a chance to go see Six Gun, do that. But Griff won't be there. It's just uh, the way it is. Yeah, that's interesting because they have a new drummer. And I like that old drummer, Steve. I really like Yeah, him. he's a great guy. He, he is. was a really good drummer. But it's going to be interesting with Savannah being on bass and they have a new drummer and they haven't worked together. That's going to be be interesting, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what somebody else says. Here's uh, 
They say six gun had to get a new bass player and drummer. So they're going to be going through a transition and I'm sure they'll be back in touch with you soon as they, uh, are great fit for your house band. Well, as program manager for the stone roadie show, they are no longer our house band. Uh, <laughs> so we, we have an opening for that. If you guys know a, a good house band. And moving right along out of that category. Uh, uh, Steve Jones says, about the belt, I realized they cut things off of in emergencies off of people, and uh, mm -hmm. usually they put them in a bag. And, oh, man, yeah, you know, that's that belt that I showed. No, man, nobody's mad at you about that. You didn't uh, sound morbid or anything. Uh, it's just I was doing a little show and tell of some of the stuff I found at the crash site. And that reminds me, um, as far as that belt goes, uh, I, yeah, I don't want to divulge who that belonged to, but I did want to show, show that to you, but my most collectible item that I have that I treasure the most I have right here beside me and, uh, and people might not understand this, but it's this right here. And why is it that Craig? Because Leslie Hawkins made chili when I was at her house <laughs> and she sent me home with this with full of chili. Now who in the hell has had a honkette cook them a chili dinner and send them something home in a Tupperware. So this Tupperware is my most treasured item that I have anything that I've ever gotten out of Skinner. That's my favorite thing. And I'll have that thing. I might even put it in my casket with me. <laughs> uh, that was some good chili i i actually have a little bit of it in a little bag in the freezer that i saved <laughs> in case i want to get it analyzed and figure out the uh, recipe and thank you very much leslie hawkins for that chili man it's unforgettable evening with a honkette and your husband is so great and you guys treated me like a king over there and i really appreciated it so uh and, uh, no, Steve Jones, you weren't morbid, buddy. Everything's fine. Oh, that's got, that pick. Yeah. yeah, that's my pick. I got one of those pick holders off the internet and put my pick in there. Yeah. That's one, uh, Mark Frank gave me some of these. No, yeah. sound like somebody might be knocking on your door, Craig. <laughs> yeah. Wicker and Leon. Didn't you give them a steak bone the other day and they were. Oh God. Yeah. I went and got a couple of T-bones and gave them the bone. Yeah. They love those. Yeah, and they, uh, they grabbed and went into their corner and probably, Oh yeah. I have to separate them. And we had wicker grabbed his and just ran off and ran under a chair with it. <laughs> I had this Jack oh, Russell. Funny. I had this Jack Russell, two Jack Russell terriers that I, that I had for a long time. And, one of them was like really smart. And if you gave them both a bone, they would be sitting there eating them. And the one would look at the other one. And then he would run over to the door and pretend like he saw something outside and start raising hell. And the other one would come over there to see, and he'd go get his bone and he'd take <laughs> it and he'd steal the other one's bone. <laughs> yeah. Those dogs are funny as hell, man. All right. Let me see here. Uh, Oh, user says, um, you and Craig are not doing the Monday morning wake and bake anymore. No, that was a misunderstanding there user. Uh, that's only when Craig and, um, Kathy are doing the Saturday night special that we're not going to do the Monday morning, uh, wake and bake because, you know, that's just too much skin formation in one week right craig we're gonna <laughs> yeah we're, yeah, yeah we're less gonna, is more sometimes yeah yeah so <clears throat> but boy i hear people are jonesing out on monday god they gotta wait you know <laughs> well you got saturday you know yeah too. they said yeah monday I, god monday came around and i was looking for the stone roadie show i was lost <laughs> i got people telling me they've watched epi every episode three times it's like, <laughs> yeah. So oh, I heard cool. from cousin Figel today too. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, not not doing feeling very good these days. He said he's uh, yeah, he's, he's not. God bless him. Good. 
Yeah, yeah, he's going through some. He wants to. He wants to. Uh, wants us to uh, do that. Ronnie's hat f- for him. That Ronnie's hat, and that that's the first. That's the first one that uh, he got. The first hat that was offered by the Freebird Foundation. He he won that. Or won that. Uh, what? However, he got it. He's got the documents from Judy and Melody and pictures and everything. And he, you know, donated. You know. 2500 bucks to the Freebird Foundation and then he got that hat and yeah that was the first one uh first one off well uh cousin yeah. Feig, Joel man send us a picture of it and we'll put it up on the uh podcast here and if somebody wants to buy it man that'll you know help you out a little yeah. bit there with some scratch you know uh, and I'm sure somebody might want that. that's a nice yeah from what item. I understand that was the first one that Judy offered you know for the <clears throat> From the Freebird Foundation, you know, when they put that was all put together, that was the first one offered, you know. Yeah, and uh, give us a little idea about yeah. what you might want for it, and uh, we'll we'll post it, and we'll keep posting it until somebody wants to buy that thing, and um, that's a collectible thing, man. So uh, if you're listening there, well, he watches all of them, so he's he's listening to the podcast for sure. Um. Yeah, so just to clear that up there, user, uh, you know, uh, th- like, for instance, there's not going to be a Saturday night special tomorrow, so we will be on Monday if the creek don't rise. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'm supposed to go fishing. <laughs> no. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding with you. Okay, let me see here. Autumn Honaker. Uh, see here. Um Oh, he wants to know, he wants to know, hear the story about how Ronnie brought that lady up to his room who was really a dude. Can you tell that story? I know we told it before, but freshen everybody's memory on that, Craig. That was in Miami. Yeah. And, uh. I don't know much about that. That's all I know is that, you know. Ronnie ended up with some guy, woman he thought was a woman that didn't end up being woman, and he about killed it. <laughs> Tried to throw it off the, the over the railing, and his hands were all beat up, and he kept trying to hit it, and it was moving, and he kept hitting hitting the wall or whatever he was swinging at. His hands was all busted up. Yeah, you, know? you got to be. What did you say her name was? Autumn. Hanniger. Autumn Honaker. Yeah, she wrote. She, she wrote. She wrote here a, a, a comment that I was. Uh, you said that name, and she she wrote me a, a a question, and I think we were asked it before, but she she turned it into a a double question, and I've been kind of holding on, on to that one because we had something coming up, but since you mentioned her name she wanted to know how did ronnie meet judy and um and uh, from what i remember dean introduced ronnie to to judy and <coughs> and um and then she also wrote um uh uh also who was your favorite out of all your out of all your wives and that's kind of of a funny one for me to address today because <laughs> because to, today May seventeenth I got married to my fifth wife that uh, twenty one years ago today and that was I really had a she was probably my favorite and uh, we knew each other for a long long time we dated back in the seventies nineteen seventy eight we dated right after right after the plane crash and then I took off with Journey and. We kind of broke up, and then uh, we got back together in 1999 and then got married in 2003, so it was 21 years ago. But, yeah, we lived together for four years and then got married for 12. But, yeah, we divorced about, oh, God, I don't know, 2015 or 14, yeah, 15 or something like that, about 10 years ago. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was probably the best one of the best days of my life. We... Uh, we got married. At, had a biker. Had a biker. Uh, 
wedding and we went to this biker church and got uh, the akron bible church that down in uh and um, down in Akron, and we it was right up this right up around the corner from the Main Street Saloon, which was where we had our our motorcycle shop. We had just uh, gone together on a, and bought a motorcycle dealership, Ridley Motors, and and uh, she would never ridden a motorcycle. And we had those three quarter motorcycles, so I bought her a bought her one of those. And <laughs> when we the day we got married was the only day she ever rode the thing. And <laughs> she never rode it after that. But she rode Yeah, she 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 you know, she uh, got on it and drove rode it from the from the church to the to the to the bar, you know, that was that was a lot of fun. And then we had the reception there at my friend's bar and he's the one that was obese that died oh, from yeah. obesity, big D, yeah. Uh, and then one of my other friends who's dead now, Tim Starcher, he was, his band played down there and oh that was that was all a lot of fun. We had a we had a, I'll never forget that day, but uh but yeah, to, to answer your question, yeah, my fifth one, that shit that was probably my my favorite. It it must have been. It lasted the longest, but it's kinda kind of odd that I'm answering this that question today on what would have been our twenty fifth wedding yeah that is kind of but, but uh, yeah that we split up that's the best thing that happened to the both of us when it did you know we're both happier when was the uh shortest awesome. what was the shortest marriage that you had my set my second one was the shortest yeah and, yeah, and that's funny because I, I still talk to her occasionally you know my my shortest and my longest are the two that i still talk to <laughs> the other ones, yeah you know the fourth one we all know she's the one that stole my dog <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a that was a crazy story and we if you guys want to hear it it's on one of the podcasts we had to get uh, Kathy Godsey, uh, she can re but, she can remember when when the you know the stories you match up the number. We can't do that though. But there's also a little bit more to the story about my fifth one. Here I've been. She she watched the podcast here a, 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 a couple of weeks ago and said that I needed to you know get Chad and my first wife Sue on the podcast with me. You know that you know she was around that whole time and that would be a good combination that goes well chad he comes on here but you know his mom would it would never come on here you know and i just laughed about it but then i talked to chad and he and he said you know she said that she would do it but she doesn't remember a lot from back then but you know she was she was like the only woman that ever stayed at the hell house and uh you know, and she's the one that was out in Alan's boat, and you know, when we were on the road, she was the one that was all, you know, go over to Kathy's, and her, and, her and Chad would go over to Kathy, and and they would, him, her and Amy would play, and you know, so I, I think there's a lot more that um, she'll remember than she, she think she thinks she does. It's kind of like me. It was just stuff that happened, and it really, you know, it's. Uh, it means it doesn't it didn't mean a lot to us at the time but got other people just to hear those stories you know but but uh yeah i talked to chad today and i said well is your mom still you know because uh, she said she'd do it and i and i asked him if, if she was still going to do it and he goes yeah but you know tanner just got out of college and and um uh, and he chad's doing some other work and now so they're trying to have a hard idea. When I was on the phone with Griff, with you today, um, you said Chad's on the phone, and I thought that, that he was trying to get a hold of you to schedule it because I just asked him. But uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're we're supposed to be getting that together with him, her, her and Chad. So you know, thanks to my last wife, that that's going to happen. And I didn't I didn't think that would that would ever happen but yeah it looks yeah like that's a fun. that's a stone roadie exclusive man you have yeah. one of craig's uh it's your second wife first wife first wife F first wife yeah chad's yeah, first mom, chad's you know. mom yeah Chad's yeah. mom yeah yeah i'll i'll get some skin information out of her <laughs> i won't ask her too much about you i don't want to piss her off well you guys are you guys will get together and do a little pre-show yeah whatever yeah we'll uh 
we'll talk. I'll give her a call and we'll talk and then, um, get her on here. And, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be great, man. She, you know, she's been to hell house. She'd been out in the boat, bad company. She's fishing out there. With, she knew Ronnie and all, all the guys in the band. And I mean, damn. Well, yeah, we mm-hmm. can ask her what she remembers about Linda Blair coming to the. <laughs> oh yeah, and when and, how, you know, all the you know all the band guys you used to you know accept, yeah. by, you know and uh, you know yeah and you know and we'll ask her about that when she was out there shooting that bow and arrow at Hell House. You got the yeah, pictures when, of that when, when Ronnie Ronnie and Judy came over with the 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 first the first gold album. They came up and was showing it to us. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a long time ago, you know. Yeah, yeah, fifty. And years. at least you, at least you guys aren't throwing knives at each other. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. Burying the hatchet like that and getting getting Craig's first wife on Chad's mom. We'll probably have Chad on the same time, right? Chad. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, yeah. So there you go. That's uh, that's coming up pretty soon. Then um, we will have that um see what we got here um oh yeah i uh i said if you guys want to hear more of craig's craigisms that i read off last week you know all his little posts about the fat things <laughs> put a put a y or put an n and i'll tally them up and if i got a lot of why i didn't get any ends <laughs> cindy hudson she says yes he wants to hear some more Craig isms. So, <laughs> so I'll get some more of those. We won't do them all the time. We just, we just do it every now and then. Um, and I, I was talking about going out in the, uh, in the bad company too. And how I was watching, um, YouTube because I've been getting ready for Gene to go fishing. And, um, and, uh, Jeff says that the fish and wildlife, they're coming down on drunk boaters, which, um, that's what jarred Gene's memory. Cause I was telling him, I said, you know, Gene, you know, these the guys that have beer in their boats, um, if, if one of these wildlife guys pulls you over and you're not even drinking behind the wheel of the boat, they will breathalyze test you. And if you refuse, they'll haul you off to jail because the open, uh, container in a boat's just as bad as in a car now it won't affect your driver's license for your car but if you're drinking and you're over the limit you will get handcuffed and you will get hauled to jail and and gene said well we ain't gotta worry about that because i don't drink and i said well i ain't gonna have any beer on there either so yeah so uh yeah but they can be assholes too about you know every little thing like i saw they were this guy had his kid uh that was like about 10 years old steering the boat and they pulled him over and gave him a 400 hundred dollar ticket because it's you know i mean come on that's that's a little ridiculous there wasn't anybody around and well it's, uh, it's like we it's like weed here in ohio is legal now but like this summer I, you know just because weed is legal you know, recreational doesn't mean you can, you know, smoke a joint while you're driving a boat, you know? It's, oh, that's the same thing. That's yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll lock you up for that one too. Yeah. If they smell weed and, and their whole thing is we smell alcohol. How the heck are you going to smell alcohol all the way across the, you know, I've seen them. <laughs> I, I smell alcohol, you know, and that just gives them an excuse to board your boat and start looking through your cooler. Um, but, I'm all for them taking the drunks off the lake because those drunks on those jet skis and no wake zones and things like that. There is definitely a need for those guys, but they sometimes go a little too far. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to the uh, comments and questions, black widow, while we're on the, on the obese subject, were any of the band members into fat chunky chicks, Craig? Not that I know of, not that they would admit, you know, it's kind of like a moped. They're fun to ride, but you just don't want to see them be seen on one, you know? 
<laughs> so uh, no one you, to see you on one. Anyway, whatever. Well, they they didn't have to. I mean, they had all those groupies and beautiful women lined up. Ready well, yeah, there back in seventy seven. There weren't no fat people. There weren't no. I mean, there were a few, but you know, there weren't no fat people back then. There was, you know. Yeah, I mean, two percent or whatever, something, something crazy. There weren't no, you know, every once in a while you see a fat person, but now, you know, now you're lucky if you see a slim person. Totally reversed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me see here. Um, okay. Back to the uh, Mr. Banker, Mike D. It's not like a really knowledgeable skin formation guy, Mike D. He says, uh, He's a long time listener and a, a first time, uh, commenter to clear the air. Mr. Banker was cut during 1973 sounds of the South demo session with Al Cooper. That's Ed King on slide. Uh, the band was a six piece at the time. And, um, I've been your fool is from those sessions that's uh, the only track that you will hear Alan play slide on. Oh, Alan, I've Been Your Fool is one of my favorite songs. I, and yeah. It was done there at Muscle Shoals. You know, something made me think that, and, and I just, yeah. You know, yeah, I was thinking it was. Um, and I didn't, cold. I never knew Alan played slide on anything. No, not much, no. That's, that's yeah yeah yeah, he, yeah i heard he played slide on that one yeah yeah so there you have it mike d thank you for that buddy and thanks for being a, a listener and and please comment more because we need more uh knowledgeable people because uh you know we can't get enough skin information to straighten things out here and uh, and that's a really great little comment there for you thanks so much uh let me see here uh oh doug harris what was the reason for huey leaving the band he died i actually read in wikipedia that he went on to do something else um but i could be wrong about it. did he die during the skinner thing well i know I'm, i know he, I, I left the band before he died but uh i i know I, he went out to dinner with his family and he went and sat in his lazy boy chair and then he uh, either he died in the lazy boy or he died in his bed in his sleep no he died he, in the lazy boy yeah yeah he died yeah, in his heard, sleep yeah, yeah. That's the way to go, man. That's how I want to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's he must have been living right, you know. <laughs> but something tells me he was putting the outlaws back together. Yeah, I think they, I read I don't him. think they ever really disbanded. <laughs> I think they were still out playing as the outlaws because he still owned that name. And then after he died, Henry Paul got the name back. But um uh, what yeah. a phenomenal guitar player that guy was, man. Huey? Oh, he, yeah. He was. I think he was still with the band when he died, though. Uh, yeah, he may have been. Yeah, because that Wikipedia is not always right either. I've seen a lot of times, and that they're wrong. They hadn't replaced him. You know, now he, yeah, he was at home. He died at home. Uh, and in Brooksville, Florida is where he was living. He lived in Brooksville, Florida. Yeah. Which is not, is like about an hour from me right here. I used to motocross race in Brooksville, the Brooksville uh, Speedway, the Brooksville Scramble Track back in the 70s um, when you guys were out touring. I was out doing my motocross thing. Yeah. Um, we'll, uh, anybody has any more information on that, uh, let us know. Maybe Mike D knows something about that. He seemed to be a pretty smart guy. And, uh, Joe Mueller says he was traumatized as a kid being too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, it's hard on a guy, man, when you can't put weight on, um, and you know, he, uh, and I, and I know a guy who 
was trying to put weight on. He was drinking all these protein powders and things, and he just couldn't. <clears throat> the funny thing about it was is he was skinny all the way up until he was about 50 years old, and then it seemed like overnight he blew up, blew up like a tick. And then the last time I saw him, I said, you ain't worried about being skinny anymore. <clears throat> and, um, uh, which leads me into what I was talking about earlier. Um, the, the, uh, good, the good story that has to do with, uh, Craig's, uh, fat shaming diet. <laughs> um, Brian Gibbons says he has lost 150 pounds and would love to come on the podcast and talk about how the stone roadie fat shaming diet, uh, took all that weight off. So, uh, we, we'll bring him on. Right. Craig. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there you go. Uh, right there, man. 150 pounds. That's almost what I weigh. That's about what you weigh, Craig. He, he said when he, when he first was, you know started trying to lose weight or whatever he was still really really heavy and he and that's when he started hearing me saying stuff about fat people and he said he said you kind of pissed me off man it was like <laughs> god damn man what the hell and then he said but then i realized that you were you were what you were saying was true you know <laughs> Just, you know everything you were saying was true and he said it really, it really motivated me, you know. After I realized that you were, you weren't being an asshole, you were trying to help, because you know, everything you said is true, you know. So uh, yeah, it is, you know. And not only that, do, do you lose the weight, but you know, you get off a lot of medications. You know, you lose you feel high better blood about it. that's the biggest part. You feel better about yourself. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to be fat. I don't give a damn what you say. Nobody wants to be fat. And everybody you see, if if if, if somebody loses fifty pounds, they're so proud of themselves. It's just like you know, they are. They're proud of themselves, you know? And it's you know. Yeah, it's uh you know, that's I mean, why people get mad that when they you talk about fat, they're not fat mad at you. They're mad at their self because they they're, they don't like themselves or they're mad. I don't know what it is. I mean, and, when and, when and, I was fat, I knew I was fat. So when people call me fat, I go, Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> I'm no. Yeah, every time mad. every time Craig would put something on his Facebook a post like one of those. Craig isms that I read last podcast and then so, somebody get on there and, and say, you're not very nice. And Craig would go, well, you must be fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dave, Dave says, uh, he actually spit his food out when, uh, the lady got pissed off when she was mad at j jumping your shit about the dogs in the car <laughs> and you called her. A, a fat, stupid fat whore, yeah. A fat whore. You did you, not just call me fat. <laughs> yeah, she didn't care about the whore. whore. She didn't disagree about the whore. Stupid part. fat, yeah, you know, just <laughs> stupid or a whore. She did not call me fat. <laughs> uh, and, and while we're in the fat topic again, uh, Crazy Bob says he's fat and is now on the on the skinny Craig diet, not to be confused with the Jenny Craig diet. <laughs> <laughs> where you count insults instead of calories <laughs> uh thank you that for that guys and having a great sense of humor about it you know i mean um you know you got to be able to laugh about it uh and we're back to the uh leonard skinnard uh which is why we're really here Wheelchair Chuck says, Craig, did you spend any time around Keith Moon? We, me and Sally Arnold went over to Keith Moon's house one night and he was, he was upstairs. He had just got thrown out of the Playboy club and he was up upstairs and his girlfriend, she knew his girlfriend and we sat there and talked to her for all bit, but he, he never showed up, huh? He was upstairs. Man, yeah. you guys probably would have had a good time, man. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I went to his house. I was there at his house for a couple hours, but he never came down. Oh, he was upstairs sleeping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, Me and Sally were there at his apartment for a couple hours, but he never came down. Talking to his girlfriend. His girlfriend was a Playboy bunny or something like that. He was, was a wild, boy. crazy son of a bitch, that Keith Moon, man. <laughs> Good God. Yeah, yeah Sally, it, Sally knew everybody, man. She she knew everybody. It'd be nice to get her on here. Yeah, Sally, if you're watching, man, you need to come on here. We need to get you on here. We'll plug <laughs> your book for you. Um, Jeff says, Craig, uh, if you ever get around to finding that tackle box by 2026, there's probably a couple doobie roaches in there. <laughs> well ronnie didn't smoke we yeah i guess he did while he was fishing nah he didn't smoke. not really no wonder why ronnie didn't smoke we probably messed his throat up or something i don't know a lot of people look at willie nelson he still sang and smoked weed but it does mess your throat up i guess some people um uh let me see here. Freebird says uh, he's looking forward to seeing Gene on the podcast again. Yep, we're going to try to make that happen Monday there, uh, Freebird. Um, um, I can't uh, I can't wait because Gene's a critiquer. You know, if, w whenever Gene sees something, he's kind of like, like Craig. You know, if he sees something he don't like, he'll tell you about it, man. Like, if he gets in that boat, like I gave Gene a, a, uh, a chair that it it actually it's it reclines and you can raise it up and it will put you on your feet it will actually stand you up on your feet and i said gene this is perfect he goes yeah man certainly yeah i'm gonna try that i'm gonna and i and i drove it over to his house and he showed he gave me the key he wasn't there and i dropped it in his uh in his garage and the next time i talked to him and i said gene how you like that chair that chair sucks he says, uh, takes too long, man. <laughs> it takes too long to get, he said, by the time you, you, you get out of that damn chair, you've done forgot what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was telling him, I said, Gene, I said, you ought to get you one of those damn bathtubs that you can close the door on. And it, I forget what they call that bathtub. You know, it's, uh, it's for, it's for older people that you know have joint problems and if you know you sit in there and and you and it's got a door on it actually and yeah, you close I've the door yeah, and it yeah. yeah and it fills all the way up and it's got massages in it and stuff and i said gee man you ought to get you one of those he goes man he goes uh people don't realize but when that thing's full if you need to get out of that tub and take a shit real quick. You got to wait on that water to drain before you can open that door. <laughs> so, he, you know, he thinks about everything, you know, he's going to make sure that, <laughs> that, you know, there's not something wrong with it before he gets it. And uh, if he don't <laughs> like it, he'll get rid of it. He don't give a damn what you think he'll get rid of it. <laughs> Uh, is and like those cell phones i gave him a cell phone you know uh it was this nice brand new samsung um smartphone and uh about a week later i called him and i go gene how you like that cell phone man i threw that damn thing in the woods he said <laughs> he said <laughs> aggravating the hell out of him and he's got a still got a flip phone he will not he will not use a smartphone he just he's just old school and he's not doing it um yeah so yeah yeah uh free bird yeah gene's coming back on um um let me see here uh yeah that's another fat thing i think we got enough fat things for one day um this person here didn't, I didn't see their name. Barry Harwood's voice still sounds fantastic. Yeah. A lot of great comments about the, um, uh, six gun footage, uh, with them in the studio. Uh, that was really awesome. Um, being in that studio with those guys and, uh, Barry Harwood and Derek Hess, uh, Savannah Seda, 
if you guys didn't get to see that, go back and look at that. Uh, it wasn't very long, but um, they did a phenomenal job in that on that uh, recording uh, getaway. And go get your copy off of iTunes or Spotify and help those guys out because they worked really hard. Everybody worked really hard to get those guys in that studio uh, hooked up with Barry Lee and Derek Hess and um, Seda. And uh, the thing that pisses me off is they – is they just didn't follow up with it and keep it going. That's just, what a waste. But uh, ph phenomenal, phenomenal recording. Uh, let me see. Laura Johnson, uh, people need to get over the fat jokes. Y'all are just having fun. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's all it's all about, you know, and try to save people's lives. Um, you know, we're here to raise money for – plane crash survivors and we're here to uh to get rid to to fight the fat we're disciples yeah, yeah. we're on a mission from god <laughs> and uh, i believe this might be the last comment right here and then we're going to go into the drive into drawings um uh, uh david selder um says uh <clears throat> the 97 on the uh the 20 uh the 20 tour in 1997 star lake star lake amphitheater burgess town pa near pittsburgh they recorded live from steel town i was there paul rogers was the opener owen hale leon on bass uh owen hale on drums gary ricky huey billy Dale and Carol Bristow. That's that <coughs> one I was talking about. They did in 97 where I saw Johnny throw that microphone like a spear all the way across the stage. And you caught that mic. If you guys get a chance to watch that, um, that Star Lake Amphitheater, uh, Burgess Town, PA near uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Paul Rogers opened up and I didn't see that part of Paul Rogers, but yeah, uh, David, man, that was a great, and you were there, man. You got to see that. And you remember that, Craig? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know Carol Bristow, uh, she's actually got a hell house painting on her wall. Um, I actually gave her a hell house painting a real nice lady, Carol Bristow, backup, uh, singer. She was singing with Dale that night. So, uh, yeah, that's all the comments. Thanks, everybody, for the comments. Great comments. Uh, you guys are awesome. And, uh, Craig, you're getting ready to pull one out. So, uh, <laughs> you guys uh, stand by, and uh, Craig's going to pull your number out of there. It's changing all the time. <laughs> all right. Shake it up, baby, now. Twist and shout. <laughs> there we go. That looks back about do, it. Craig, there. do like this. Do like this, Craig. There you go. Right, now you're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. All right, here we go. I'll reach down in there and try to keep my hand visible the whole time without looking in there. And it's going to be, oh, that's the last one in my hand. And it's number uh, 47, 47, Four number 47, 47. Yeah. Turn it around, look at it, make sure I'm looking at it right, Craig. Is uh, forty-seven, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a change. That's on down the scale. Yeah, should have been. It could have been seventy-four, huh? Right. <laughs> forty-seven. Uh, who is lucky forty-seven? Huh? Yeah, who's forty-seven? Uh, of course, they know who they are. But... Oh, let's see here. Drum roll, please. 47. 
Alrighty. Da, 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 da. Oh. Uh, Janet Green. Number 47. Janet Green, you are the winner. Yeah, how about that? On the Friday drawing. So uh yeah. Yeah. You do you do need to uh confirm your winning uh and send Craig an email, right, Craig? Uh-huh. Yeah, Janet. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. And, and what's the email address again? Uh, the stoned roadie at gmail.com. Yeah. So, so yeah. tell Craig that, yeah, that you recognize you are the winner and he'll get that right out to you. Number 47, Janet green, the stone roadie at gmail.com. Yay. Congratulations. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, what you got here today? Oh, that's the Holy Grail. You don't even have a clue what that is, do you? No, I don't. Yeah, Stone Roadie Show. You ever heard of it? No. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. The Stone Roadie. Check them out, man. It's got the all-time world's famous Stone Roadie Craig Reed and his sidekick from NASA, Griff Martin. All right, Craig. It's a wrap, man. Yeah. You can go You can go take the rest of those gummies. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh... Cut.